All right, now this video has been really difficult to make, but a lot of fun at the same time. So I have been shooting on Canon for years and recently I bought my first Sony camera, the Sony a7 III. And now I have gotten into the crazy world of picture profiles, figuring out how they work, which ones are the best ones to use, and overall, what the heck you're supposed to do with all these different options. Well, in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain what I've learned about these profiles, and hopefully it'll help you know which one to use in different situations, and which ones to honestly try your best to just completely stand clear of. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And first of all, if you're brand new to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking, gear, tips, and tutorials. But as I mentioned before, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the different picture profiles inside Sony cameras. Now, the first thing you'll notice that when you hop into your camera is that there are tons of pre-created picture profiles, but none of these are completely set in stone. All of them are customizable. Literally everything within each picture profile is customizable. So even if you hop into one and it says S-Log2, it doesn't have to remain S-Log2. You can change it to Cine4 or whatever you want. Now, with that being said, there are lots of different options. I mean, you can go in and change the actual picture profile. You can change your color depth. You can change your knee. You can change your, you know, just the different ways that colors are seen on camera. And so with all these changes, I'm gonna have to list each setup that I did, you'll actually see what the settings were for each shot as we go through it. All right, now what are the few things that I use to test this video? Basically, I use these picture profiles kind of as listed and I'll kind of show you a quick little synopsis of each of these. So the first one that I used is what I set up as picture profile one, which is my Cine 4 profile. This is actually the same one that I use in my low light test and it's honestly been my favorite one up to this point. Now the second one I use is actually EOS HD's profile. Now this is a custom profile created by EOS HD and technically they charge for the information. So I think I would be illegally giving out that data. Picture profile three is one that I set up that is a complete HLG profile. And basically it is a way to kind of get um, HDR out of your camera and to get way more color accuracy. In my opinion, this one worked really well with preserving highlights. And then last but not least, picture profiles seven and eight are both S-Log profiles, one being S-Log two and the other being S-Log three. And again, we will touch on all of these shortly. Now, each of these profiles are great in their own way. They're all kind of designed for something differently. Um, but first, let's go ahead and look at my personal picture profile, which is picture profile one, and I'll explain to you guys about it and why I like it. So the reason why I like picture profile one in this situation is because I absolutely love how simple this is to grade. Right out of camera, it actually looks not too bad. It just needs a little bit of contrast. And that's what I found is that with a simple little S curve on this, you're pretty much good to go. Your colors stay intact. It looks really phenomenal. And honestly, it's, in my opinion, my favorite so far. Now, when it comes to the EOS HD picture profile, this one works really good outdoors with tons of light. I mean, as far as your colors go, they're very saturated, they're very punchy, just like Canon colors are. It is very similar to shooting with Canon. The only thing I will say is that if you don't have enough light, this tends to break down fairly quickly. It's also not really easy to do a lot of grading with this one here, since it's actually pushing its highlights and shadows to their absolute breaking points. Um, so there's not gonna be a lot of grading you'll be able to do with this, but if you like that oversaturated kind of look, that punchy look, then the EOS HD isn't a bad choice. Now, when it came to picture profile three, my HLG profile, this one is actually one that I really was interested in testing out because when it comes to shooting on my Mavic, I absolutely love shooting in the HLG profile with the Mavic Pro 2. Um, but when it came to the Sony, I found that it wasn't quite as much detail. Now, obviously the difference is on the Mavic, you're shooting in 10 bit and on the Sony, you're shooting in eight bit. So you don't quite get the exact same color definition and you don't get exactly the same amount of dynamic range. But I will say that both cameras, 
whether you're shooting on the Mavic Pro 2 or you're shooting on the Sony, with the HLG, you get tons of detail in your highlights. I mean, when it comes straight out of camera, it doesn't look very good. It actually looks like everything is blown out, but really simply, you can just start pulling back those highlights and it blows me away every time how much detail is still remained in those highlights. But also because of the way that it's shooting, it's saving a lot of detail in the shadows as well. I will say it doesn't really give a very cinematic look. It gives a very real world look when you're actually looking at it. It actually has this sort of HDR kind of feel to it. So if you absolutely are trying to preserve as much dynamic range as possible in the highlights and in the shadows, this is a great way to go. However, I'm not a huge fan of how it looks, but if you need this, well, it's great to know that this is an option. The next one we're going to jump into is the S-Log profiles. Now, personally, when I tried shooting this with S-Log 2 and S-Log 3, I very quickly dismissed S-Log 3. In my opinion, S-Log 3 was just too grainy and I wasn't really a huge fan of it. But when it came to S-Log 2, once I figured out how to expose it properly, it actually was very usable. Now, the trick to S-Log 2 is exposing it at two stops above what your meter thinks it should be. So what I typically found, which I thought was kind of interesting was because S-Log2 actually has to be shot at a minimum ISO of 800, whenever I set up my camera for let's say picture profile one, which has a minimum ISO of 200, well, it was exposed properly, but then I would switch my camera over into picture profile seven, which was my S-Log2 profile. And immediately because the ISO had to be set at 800, I could see that it was overexposed. On top of it being overexposed, it was properly overexposed at two stops over, which meant that it was exactly where I needed it to be. So from what I kind of understand is like, S-Log2 is designed to be, you know, set up at at least two stops of overexposure. So that way it can give you the most dynamic range. And that's the only way that it works well. If you try to expose S-Log2, like where your meter is set to zero, where it's properly exposed, you're gonna get these really muddy, nasty shadows that are almost impossible to bring back. Your colors are all over the place. And honestly, it's just not usable. So make sure that if you are shooting in S-Log2 that you can properly expose it at two stops over. Now, the really funny thing about all of these is that when you look at them all completely side by side, you really can't tell which is which. Now, obviously I will say that the HLG definitely stands out. The way that it does the things that it does with the highlights, it's absolutely noticeable. But for the rest of them, it's not really as noticeable. The S-Log2, you can kind of tell is a little bit flatter than the other straight out of camera. But when you grade all of these, that's really where you can decide, you know, wow, these really aren't that different. You can pretty much get the same thing out of most of them. HLG kind of being that one little off to itself. But even with S-Log2, if you know kind of what you're doing in the grade, you can definitely bring these all back to looking pretty much the same. Now, this last test that I did was one to really test out the shadows again, because I wanted to see which one would be best if I needed to, you know, maybe expose for the highlights and then try to bring back my shadows and so that's exactly what I did I went out I exposed for the sky and then I walked in the frame and then basically had to bring basically all my personal exposure back in post and again they all pretty much did the same except for HLG HLG again just has this totally different look than all of the other ones but I will say that they all did a fairly good job at bringing back those shadows. Obviously, this is an extreme test and you really would never expose your footage this way. You should always expose for your subject and then if you have to blow your highlights a little bit, then go for it. But it was kind of interesting to see that how well all of them stacked against one another when it came to bringing back those shadows and kind of trying to balance the shot. So since all of these kind of look the exact same, except for HLG, and they all are kind of a totally different look straight out of camera, well, which one is the best one for each situation? Here's basically what I wanted to kind of come to and kind of the conclusion that I had. Picture profile one, which is this one here, it is still my favorite. The reason why it's my favorite is because it is the easiest one to grade in post. On top of that, it also has a lot of other pros being the fact that its base ISO is only 200. 
I mean, I still go out with an ND filter if I'm shooting outdoors in a bright day, but with like, for example, if you're shooting indoors, you don't have to have an ND filter like you're gonna have to have with S-Log. The other thing that I liked about it was that the colors were right there. It was a little flat, but not too flat, making it easy to, if you wanted to just go with it, you could, but it is always nice to put a nice little grade on it. Now, when it came to the EOS HD, I was actually not that big a fan of it. I mean, I think for certain situations it was good, but do I think it's worth the price? Absolutely not. The fact that they don't actually give you anything when you buy it, the fact that all you're giving is just basically settings that you can put into your camera and then just go with, lets me know that they didn't do anything special. They just figured out a picture profile that they thought looked close to Canon, which in my opinion, it was even a little oversaturated compared to Canon. So even though that it is something that they kind of claim is really close to the Canon look, I would not recommend buying this because I think you can go in the settings and figure that out for yourself. And then last but not least, when it came to the S-Log settings, personally, I actually enjoyed shooting an S-Log. Now, S-Log has been something that I wasn't really liking for the longest time, and I think it was because I never got around to exposing it properly. But since now learning that you have to keep it at at least two stops overexposed or you want to have it right around two stops overexposed it will allow you to get a great exposure but again a couple things you want to be careful of if you are shooting in a bright day you're absolutely going to need an nd filter on top of that if you start bumping the iso too high it does get muddy very quickly so with these things kind of being the caveat that they are S-Log2 does give you great dynamic range it gives you tons of information in the highlights and the shadows However, it does come with a lot of cons, so you're gonna have to figure out if you wanna balance those things out to be able to shoot in S-Log2. I think at the end of the day, for me, I'm gonna continue to shoot in my picture profile one option, strictly because it's not only the easiest one to color grade, but it's gonna give me the closest look out of camera that I personally am gonna be looking for. When it comes to skin tones, when it comes to how I have it all set up, this is probably the one that I'm gonna go with. On top of that, it is important for you to try to choose a certain profile that you wanna stick with and not be bouncing around from different ones. And the reason why I recommend that is because then you can set up certain LUTs, certain looks, um, certain things that can kind of make your editing process faster, especially if you're using the same profile each time. And then also, if you're switching profiles constantly, it doesn't, it's not impossible to match them, but it's not as easy to match the different profiles. So I would definitely recommend picking one profile and testing it out and seeing which one you'd like. Now, obviously all of these profiles are custom. So the way I have them set up is the way they worked in this test. If you are trying to figure out the perfect profile for you, the first thing I would do is try to take a look at if you like Cine 4, S-Log2, HLG, or any of the other ones, see, start there. And then from there, start dialing in your settings, starting kind of going into your color mapping and your color depth and things like that. It's gonna be hard to figure out exactly which picture profile you like. But what I typically tell people to do is find a creator whose videos and color that you currently like. Like for example, if you like these videos right now, because I'm shooting all this in that Cine 4 picture profile one that I talked about earlier. If you like the colors that you're currently seeing, maybe start here and then start slowly tweaking and figuring out how to set up that color the way you want it to be. Doing things like increasing the saturation or decreasing the saturation. So that way you can get the best look out of camera. But I will say that at least in my personal opinion, when it comes to Sony, in almost all situations, you're gonna need to do just a little bit of post-processing. But I like to go with the profile that requires the least amount as possible. So there you have it guys. I hope this video was helpful. I know it was jam packed with a lot of information. If you guys wanna see a follow up video to this or you guys have additional questions on how I pulled off some of the things that I pulled off in this video 
or other comparisons or if you even have your own suggestions as far as if I did something wrong because I'm not trying to say I know everything this was just my own personal experience with all these different profiles I love to hear what you guys have to say down below and again don't forget if you haven't already hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be dropping a lot more videos on Sony and on filmmaking and photography and all that great stuff so you're definitely not gonna want to miss any of those videos but until the next time I'll catch you guys in the next video peace